All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all the praises and the glory to Yahweh Bashmi Al Shab Bashim Al Rakak Radash. Double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone and to Lutanaki out there that's pushing his truth in all sincerity. Shalom. And um, the title of this lesson is going to be called The World Unshut Down. That's exactly what we see today by seeing these articles and going out there and seeing it for ourselves in the real world, in reality. Um, and what do we see is, is we see people going crazy, grabbing as much as they can get out of the shelves. You go to your store and you don't see much of anything that you need because all that which is what you need is damn near gone because people are pretty much grabbing as much as they can grab because of this coronavirus situation. All right. And this coronavirus is simply leading this world towards the end and I pray and I hope that that is the case and I hope and pray as well as that they keep continuing on with this coronavirus thing so we can get the hell out of here and then they can bring in the, the mark of the beast the microchip because they're already declaring like I think this very well may be something that they may have to continue on because this is now global this is a global situation this has affected the world globally it's affected countries around the world economically. All right. Businesses have been shut down so much so that even forms of sports you can think about have been either postponed or suspended. So this has actually made an effect, a major impact on the world. And when we think about sports, which is a Romanized thing, when you take that away from the people, what are you also showing that? There's no more of this world, okay? When Esau is led through the spirit to do away with all forms of sports, then again, we got to say, and, it, and it's safe to say, that we're at the end of this world because all of these forms of sports make up this world for what it is. Because this ain't nothing but Rome all over again. In ancient Rome, you had all manner of forms of sports going on for, for the sense of the people to be entertained. All right. So when the entertainment aspect of this world is gone, then what do you have? You have nothing because that's what makes this world go around sports, all forms of entertainment. All right. So like I said, once you take that away from the people, that means it's the end. OK. Anyway, we're going to get to the scriptures now. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 1, not 1, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. And that's exactly what we've done. We've all came into this truth when we were young. The word remember means to bring back to mind. So the Lord, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi al Shai, we were brought back to mind of our creator to serve him. And now we know all that we know to serve our creator in the best way possible before the evil day comes. Let's read this again. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say I had no pleasure in them while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened nor the clouds return after the rain in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few. In other words, the jobs are going to be gone. Like I said, due to this coronavirus situation, it's led businesses to close up. All right? So if a lot of businesses are being closed up, that simply means there's going to be a lack of employment. The grinder cease. So let's read this again. And the grinder cease because they are few. And those that look out of the windows be darkened. And the there's no future for this world. Okay? And uh, this leads me to the scripture in the book of Psalms 49. Because even the elites, there's no future for them also. Okay? They can't go past the time the Lord gave them the room. According to uh, Job 14. But let me get this right here. This is Psalms 49, I believe. Verse 11, 
their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places for all generations they call their lands after their own name so like I said according to Ecclesiastes 12 verse what is it uh three where it says let me read it again in the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grind to cease because they are few and those that look out of the window be darkened because even the elites they're trying to look out of the window to see if there's some kind of future but there's no future there's only it's only so far Esau can go with his world so let's read this again the inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations they call their lands after their own names all right now what i'm going to get i'm going to get job 14 because there's not a millisecond that Esau can pass when it comes to him continuing on his kingdom he's going to come to his end once Esau reaches to his apex that's it Job 14 verse 5 seeing his days are determined and the number of his months are with thee thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass all right and that pretty much explains the time period that the Lord has given him to rule and the word determined is uh I believe the Hebrew word is karatiza which means cut so it is a amount of time that was cut for Esau to rule once the people of Edom that run the system reach to their limit that's it it's done okay and I hope and pray that this coronavirus is literally going to bring in the mark of the beast because I can easily see that happen so um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Second Ezra's uh, the ninth chapter he answered and he answered me and said measure thou the time diligently in itself and when thou seest part of the signs pass which I have told thee before then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people which we're going to see more of that later run of the continuous coronavirus thing right verse 4 then shalt thou well understand that the most high speak of those things from the days that were before thee even from the beginning verse 5 for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and, and an end and the end is manifest okay and that's exactly the truth because every empire that came about they rose up just so they can fall down in the end so like all is in the earth have, an, have a beginning and also have its end and Esau due to their uh, power structure is coming to an end all right and this corona this coronavirus could could very well lead esau towards their end and i hope and pray in the name of yahweh bashmi al shai that that is very well the case let's move on ecclesiastes 7 verse where we at verse 8 better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof and the patient in spirit is better than the proud, of, proud in spirit. So the thing that we're looking towards the end of is simply this world. What does it say in Jeremiah 28? It says that the prophets prophesy against many great countries and against great kingdoms of evils and pestilence to come. And we're in the days of pestilence right now. And the main pestilence currently is the coronavirus. Okay? So we're here. We're in the, we're in the days of pestilence. And things are just going to get worse. And I hope and pray that, like I said, this coronavirus brings this world to the standstill that it needs to be. Let's read uh, Ezekiel 2 verse 5. There's a lot of you jakes out there. You've heard us, man. And you disregarded what we're saying to you. And now when, 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 the, when push comes to really shove on your asses, then you're going to really consider, man, I should, have, I should have listened to them guys on the street corners. I walk past them every day. You know, while I was at work or whatever I was doing, I saw the men looking directly at me, talking to me, telling me what I needed to do. And yet I still disregarded them. And that's what a lot of you jakes 
are going to come to realize. A lot of you are going to come to realize and examine yourselves as to what you have done. Okay, a lot of you are going to find out that the, the information that we were giving you was for your benefit. But you've disobeyed it. So guess what? Now you're going to have to reap the reward of not repenting. And that's to your own destruction. Ezekiel 2 verse 5. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, and yet shall know that they are, have been a prophet among them. Okay? And that's ultimately is going to be the thing. You're going to know that there were prophets among you because we are the prophets, man. All right? The, the, the situation that's happening right now, this coronavirus thing, is nothing but a pestilence that we've been prophesying about. All right? Now, we didn't know exactly what it was going to be called, but we just know that the pestilence were, were, were going to come. And we also know that the end of the world is going to come. There's many things that we, we've spoken about before this, these days and times came. And the word prophet simply means to say before. Someone that predicts the future. So that you understand. And that's exactly what we've been doing for ages. While you jakes have walked past us like we didn't exist. And then you're going to reconsider what we've been saying to you. When push comes to shove. Really. Because really ain't. Nothing happened yet really. The world is still going as it is. Certain countries are at, at a um, shutdown situation. But, you know, you, it's, not, it's not to the point where we're literally at the end of this world. Like, once we reach to that point where the society's at a total collapse, then you, Jason, are going to consider that you should have listened. Okay? And what you're going to consider ultimately is what is said in Ezekiel, the second chapter and the fifth verse. Yet shall they know, yet shall know that there have been a prophet among them. You're going to know that we were the prophets among you telling you what you needed to do. And we broke it down to you. We didn't just curse you out. We broke it down to you, man. We specified what you needed to do so that you could repent and be saved. All right? So that's it on that. So let's get Ezekiel 3, verse uh, 20. Six. This is Ezekiel 3 verse 26 and I will make thy tongue to cleave to the roof of thy mouth that thou shalt be dumb and shall not be to them a reprover for they are a rebellious house so it's going to come a time where when all these prophecies are speaking to you we don't have to speak anything because everything that we've spoken to you about or told you about is speaking for itself okay and it's going to come to that point where we're not going to be out there on the streets no more now it's going to have to get to the point where a lot of you Jace that didn't consider this truth, you're going to have to find this thing for yourselves. And I got the scripture on deck. We're going to start with 25 and 8. Matthew 25 and 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, give, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered and saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. In other words, you're going to have to figure this thing out for yourself. You're going to have to find the wisdom and understanding for your damn self. All right? You didn't, it, all you could have done is simply repented when the time was, when the time was right. But now you're asking for the wisdom and understanding when the time is wrong. Okay? And we're not going to give you the truth because that's going to be the wrong time for us to give you the truth. The Lord is going to shut our mouths to where we don't say anything. Let's read this again. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth that thou shalt be dumb and shall not be to them a reprover. For they are a rebellious house. So in that day of great despair of this world, we're not going to say a damn thing. All right? We're not going to be a reprover no more. We're not going to be a prophet no more. We're simply going to keep this truth to ourselves. Whoever got the truth, they got the truth. Whoever don't got the truth, then that's just on you. All right? Because we're already here now, man. We, it looks to be, it seems to me that this is the end. Okay? This is the end. And that's all I have to say, man. Lord willing, this is the end. <laughs> so, with that, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, 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 